Chanda Premakam Gurube Gora Chanda Radhika Tadale Krishna Krishna Bhakta Tadabhakta Come on look at the screen. That that's that's there. Okay. Oh oh no, it just changed. Oh no, it's going up. You go up and you can see big screen there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadha Shiva Sadi Gauravat Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ramo Hare Ramo 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 Hare Hare So first of all I offer pranams to our Gurudev and Vishnu Padu Dendi Sami Sivakti Vedanta Narayan Gosai Maharaj also our Rupanuga Guru Parampara, all devotees, Hare Krishna. Sorry we're a little late this morning. The iPad was using too much, too much internet, so we changed back to my old computer, which is, hasn't been used for a few years, so little trouble we had, technical problem. Okay, so we're hearing from Hanuman. <clears throat> how Narad Muni was seeking for the recipient, the best recipient of Sri Krishna's mercy. Therefore, he went everywhere. First, he went to one Brahman at Prayag. From there, he went to one king in South India. That king said, No, no, the demigod, the king of the demigods, Indra, he has more mercy than the human beings. From Indra, he went to Brahma. Brahma said, no, I am absorbed in the goings-on of the universe, the maintenance of the universe, how I can do bhajan. Shiva is topmost. Shiva has renounced everything. Then Shiva said, no, Prahlad has even more mercy. The residents of Vaikuntha and even those with material body doing pure bhajan, they are not less. So Prahlad is the topmost. Prahlad said, no, no, I could not do any seva. But Hanuman is the personification of service. Hanuman is the recipient of the mercy of Bhagavan. And from there, Narad Muni met to Hanuman and Hanuman is saying, no, Prahlad is the recipient of Krishna's mercy. Oh, sorry, the Pandavas are the recipient of Krishna's mercy. Because I only have one relationship, servant, but the Pandavas have many, many relationships. What Krishna has not done for the Pandavas, he is their guru, their master, their horse, their chariot driver, their servant, their messenger, their cousin brother. So all type of relationships the Pandavas have with Krishna. So hearing this, Hanuman became absorbed in ecstasy and he began to describe more the glories of the Pandavas. So Hanuman little, he said, the Pandavas, I don't know what mantra they know or what thing, what medicine they give to Bhagavan that controls him so much. Why even they make Krishna their chariot driver and their messenger? These are very low positions <laughs> to be a messenger or a chariot driver. But Krishna did that after the one year of a Gyadvas where the Pandavas remained in hiding in South India. As they came out of hiding, that time all the kings of the whole world choose. Some chose the Pandavas and some chose the sons of Dhritarast. So, that time, Krishna also went to Hastinapur as a messenger on behalf of the Pandavas, Shanti Dut. So, what Krishna has not done for the Pandavas? No. So, Hanuman, so much absorbed in ecstasy, he began to dance in bliss. And he said, actually, I have so much good fortune, Hanuman said. Why? Because I have so much connection with the Pandavas, therefore Bhagavan also gave me so much mercy. You know, we should always even, always try to be under the Anugati, the guidance of Sadhu. You know, 
this is our identity. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, when someone asked, who are you? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu not gave some bodily identification or some identification with the formalities of the Vedic system. Mahaprabhu said, Naham Vipra, Naja, Narapati, Napi Vaishna, Nasudra, Naham Vani, Naja, Grihapati, Napanastu, Kintu, Pradana, Kilo, Gopi Bhatta, Padakamalam, Dasir, Dasam. I am not any, for I have no formal position in society as a Brahmachari, Chatriya, Vana, as a Brahmin, Chatriya, Vaishya, Sudra, nor I no identify myself with any bodily formal position like a sannyasi, a grihasta, a renounced Vanaprastha or a Brahmachari, then what's my identity? I'm the servant of the servant of the servant of the beloved of the gopis. So Mahaprabhu had that identity. Britta Britta Padakama. The servant of your servant servant. Britasya Britamiti Smara Lokanath. O Lokanath, I think British will pray. You please remember I am the servant of your servant servant a thousand times removed. So even though Hanuman is so great, Hanuman says, I have good fortune, I have so much connection with the Pandavas. Number one connection is is Hanuman's connection with Bhim Sen, like Bhim is like younger brother. Now, there's a wonderful story <clears throat> when Bhim Sen, uh, the Pandavas smelt some wonderful fragrance, then Draupadi said, Bhim, please bring some flowers. But those flowers were from the celestial realms, human cannot go. But Bhim, so much intoxicated by his strength, that he went. So on the way he saw one huge monkey, but very old. <laughs> His tail was across the path. So Hanuma to continue to the heaven, the celestial realms, then Bhim had to cross over the tail of that monkey. But in Vedic culture it's considered very low class to kick someone, to point your feet at them, to step over them. No, because Supreme Lord in everyone and in everything, therefore we cannot disrespect so. Again and again, Bhim Sen requested, oh, old monkey, remove your tail. But the old monkey said, I'm very old, I cannot do so. Like a bit neglectful of Bhim, so Bhim wanted to pick up his tail and throw that monkey, but how astonishingly he could not move the tail of that monkey one cent, one inch, no matter how much he tried. Then Bhim began praying to Hanuman. Actually, Bhim did not know that was Hanuman in disguise. Oh, and Bhim started glorifying Hanuman. Then that old monkey said, Who is this Hanuman you speak of? You seem to have some affection for him. Then Bhim said, Yes, yes, he is my older brother. He is very powerful. He was the one that jumped across the ocean to help Ramchandra. He did this, he did that. Then Anyway, so much Bhim began glorifying Hanuman. Hanuman became pleased and that old monkey showed his form as Hanuman. Then Bhim became amazed and Bhim requested, I want to have darshan of that form you took to cross the ocean. And Hanuman was a little afraid because this form is so huge, but he showed that gigantic form to Bhim. So anyway, Hanuman blessed him also. So Hanuman said, I also have so much good fortune because relation with the Pandavas. Another relationship is also Arjuna accepted the share of Hanuman. When one time Arjuna went to South India and he was standing on the shore of the ocean with Rameshwaram. From there, the monkey army built the bridge to Lanka. So that time, Arjuna was looking and there was an old monkey there that was Hanuman in disguise. Then Arjuna said, I cannot understand why Ramchandra had to make a bridge of rocks and stones. Huh? Oh, no. 
Ya. Yeah. Technical problem. So, anyway, so. Prema, come. You cannot see. This. Uh. Hey, should I start again? I don't know if it's uh yeah, from the Oh, so no need to start again. Okay. So anyway, sorry about that, some technical problem again. So Arjuna asked why Ramchandra had a, a bridge made of rock. He could have made some bridge of arrows. No? Means, isn't it? A little bit of... And Hanuman feel pain because Arjuna is neglecting Ram. So Hanuman spoke. No, no. You don't know the size of those monkeys? They are so huge. Any ordinary bridge of arrows could not maintain their weight. And Arjuna felt challenged. He was challenging my, my archery skills. So Arjuna made a bridge of arrows. <laughs> and that old monkey, Hanuman, he manifested himself. You know? And with one foot, he crushed that bridge. And Arjuna felt great shame. So again, he made another bridge. This time, very strong. So Hanuman crashed his foot on it, it did not break, then he crashed three, four times, then it broke. So Arjuna used his full strength, full expertise, made another bridge. And this time he's praying to Krishna, save me, I am your devotee. My defeat is your defeat. So that time Hanuman began jumping on the bridge, but it would not break. So Hanuman made a huge, enormous foam. He put many rocks in his mouth, many in his pockets, tied many mountains to his body. He began jumping up and down, but the bridge would not break. So Hanuman began praying to his worshipful deity, Ram. Oh Ram, my defeat is your defeat. Please save your devotee. So both the, Arjuna was praying to Krishna and Hanuman was praying to Ram. Then they noticed some blood coming under the bridge. Then Arjuna looked under the bridge. He saw Krishna holding the bridge on his back. And Hanuman from the other side, he looked. He saw Ram holding that bridge. It means Bhagawan is one, but he is perceived differently according to the different inclination and affection of the devotee. So anyway, Hanuman was very pleased. So he offered a benediction to Arjuna that during the battle of the Mahabharat, that Arj that the Hanuman would stay on the flag of Arjuna and by his roars, he would break the confidence of the opposition. So Hanuman thought like this. And also, Arjuna is con Hanuman considers Arjuna to be superior to him because Ram not married his sister to Hanuman, but Krishna married his sister Subhadra to Arjuna. So Hanuman says, Prabhu Priya Tamantu Prasadam Paramam Bina Na Siddhite Priya Seva Dasanam Na Farate Api. Without the mercy of the dear devotees of Bhagavan, service by servants like me can never attain success. So always we should be under the guidance of Bhagavan, the devotee of Bhagavan. We should not try to approach directly, we should try to approach through the devotees, through the superior devotees. So even Hanuman is perfected soul, associate of the Supreme Lord, but even he have these feelings, then how much more we should have. So that time Hanuman spoke, oh, the sweetness displayed by Krishna now in Mathura and Dwarka, that is inconceivable even for persons like Brahma and Shiva. 
want to speak of anywhere else, even in Ayodhya, the Supreme Lord man never manifested so much sweetness as he now is doing, controlled by the affection of the Pandavas. So as Hanuman said that, Arju, uh, Narad Muni said, get up, get up, let's go now to the Pandavas. But Arjuna, but Hanuman just took a deep sigh. You know why? Because he knows the Pandavas are superior, he knows Krishna's the topmost, but still he have his nista, his fixed faith in the feet of Ram Chandra. So that time Hanuman said, if I go there, after all, even the creator of the universe, Brahma, he became bewildered. So a monkey like me, if I go in the pastimes, and who knows what disturbance I will cause. Therefore, what to speak of a mindless monkey like me? No. Therefore, I am fearful of committing offenses, so I should not go there. Therefore, there's no need to discuss this any further. You should go to take darshan of the Pandavas. So Hanuman knows everything, but still he has his fixed faith, his fixed love and affection for the fate of Ram Chandra. This is another proof that the surup of the jiva not changed by association. That Stai Bhav is eternal and unchanging. So, Hanuman said, no. I know the Pandavas are the topmost. I know that Sri Krishna, the Bhagavan, manifests a superlative degree of sweetness there in Ayodhya, but nonetheless, I have the topmost love for the son of Kausalya. Who is that? That is Ramchandra, who is non different from Sri Krishna, the son of Devaki. That same Devaki Nandan has a, is always increasing my devotion to the lotus feet of Raghunath Ramchandra. Their natures are non-different. I have the highest affection in the form of Sri Raghupati, that Lord Ram is always soft-hearted. He is very kind. He possesses a straightforward and non-devious nature. He is equal to everyone. He accepted the vow of having only one wife. He is always shy. He keeps his face low, lower due to shyness. And by his qualities of humility, he pleases the three worlds. He is always served by Sita, Lakshman, by of Bharat, as well as the king of monkeys, Sugriv, and other monkeys. He is the shelter of Vibhasan. He carries the bow. He is the son of Dasarat and Kausalya. So, Hanuman not changed his is today. He's fixed there. So, sometimes Bhagavan calls me for the darshan of my dearest Ram Chandra. In this way, Hanuman revealed his nishta. So, Hanuman said, I will stay here in case the Lord calls me, Lord Ram calls me for some seva. You should go now. No? Therefore, also, Hanuman gives some word of advice to Narad. Oh, now we are brahmacharis, I mean celibates, lifelong celibates. No? But do not think that you are inferior to the Pandavas, even though the Pandavas have entered Grihastha Ashram, entered into family life. Do not think they are materialists because they are always absorbed in running the kingdom. Hmm. Please know whatever affection the Pandavas show for, especially Yudhisthira shows for his brothers and wife and kingdom, this is only in relationship to Krishna. No. Why devotee has so much love for one another? Because devotee loves Bhagavan and they love Bhagavan. Therefore, sometimes devotees are very sentimental. Oh, Gurudev should love me no matter what I do. But it's not like that. If you do bhajan, then Gurudev loves you. Otherwise, you have no relation with Gurudev, no relation with devotion. No affection for Radha Krishna, not following the limbs of devotion, then what relationship you have with Gurudev? There's one story I was there, no, there was one time Gurudev was in Rupsanatan upstairs, and one man, his name was, you know, I won't say his name, but 
after many, many years, he came back to Guru. He was actually a disciple of Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj. And so many years he took shikta, shiksha from Bhakti Rakshak Shri Dhar Swami Maharaj. Actually, he was going to take, he wanted to take sannyas from Gurudev. But Gurudev that time was not giving sannyas, so he sent him. Anyhow, arrangement was there, he took sannyas from Tripurai Maharaj and other Vaishnav. But when he came back after many years, he had no sikha, no neck beads, no chanting mala, no sannyas cloth, just jeans and t shirt. And before he had very friendly relation with Gurudev. So when he came, Gurudev not spoke to him, Gurudev completely ignored him. So finally he said, Oh Gurudev, it's me, your friend. And he said his name. No? Then Gurudev said, Friend? How can you be my friend? Then Gurudev said, I used to have a friend. I used to have a friend. He was always following his Gurudev. He was always wearing neck beads. He was always having Sikha. He was always chanting the holy name, following a courtesy. I used to have a friend, but this person knew I don't know you. Then that man said to Gurudev, Oh Gurudev, don't be a fanatic. Should have seen Gurudev's face. You know? The Gurudev become like a tiger. And he said to him, I never forget this. Gurudev said, Look, you know, for bhakti, for devotion, I gave up my wife, my children, my mother and father, my brother, all my childhood friends. I gave up everything for bhakti. So you have no relation with bhakti. How can you have any relation with me? So. The affection of the Vaishnavas is not Maya, it's not mundane, it's based on devotion. If we're sincerely trying to love Takuji, sincerely trying to serve, then Guru Vaishnava will have so much affection for us. So their affection is never mundane, never material. So, Punaman says, do not think the Pandavas are like that. What affection they have? That is only because of relationship with Krishna. So many, many things Hanuman is saying. Actually, Hanuman said, fine cloth, garlands, praise, sandalwood paste, good foodstuffs. These things cannot give happiness to devotees like Yudhisthira Maharaj. Because Yudhisthira Maharaj, surrounded by the fire of Krishna Prem, so other things cannot touch him, cannot approach him. Whatever relationship Yudhisthira shows to his kinsmen, his relatives, his brothers and wife, is only because they are also dear to Krishna. If we love Krishna, we have to love that which is dear to Krishna. That is a symptom of affection. No? Therefore it says, no? Ananta mamata vishnu na ananya premasangate bhakti uchite bhisma pralada nara da udu. Deep affection for Krishna is called Bhagavad, Mamata, minus. Like in material life, we say my watch, my mobile, my house, my wife, my children. So this material attachment. But in spiritual life, this minus is also comes very strongly for Krishna. Krishna is my son, my beloved, my friend. Krishna is the beloved of my Swamini Radhika. So this feeling of mamata minus this is the measurement of devotion. Krishna is mine. So also that which is related to Krishna is also very dear to the devotee. Like the peacock feather, flute, cows. These things also become Vaishnavas, Ikarasi. These things also become dear to the Vaishnavas. So Hanuman says, give some warning to Narad. Or now you go there, but don't think they are just ordinary materialists or grihastas or everything, even their affection for one another is based on pure devotion, based on love and affection for Krishna. So Narad Muni became ecstatic, dancing, dancing in ecstasy by his mystic potency. He merely went to the capital of Yudhisthira Maharaj. Now he's called Delhi, that time. Is called Hastinapur. That time Narad Muni saw Yudhisthira was with his brothers and wives and they were discussing 
How we can invite Krishna back to back to Hastinapur? Some excuse, some problem, some big fire sacrifice there, or some cata catastrophe. So he saw the Pandavas were planning how to bring Krishna back. That time when the doorkeeper announced the arrival of Narada, Yamara, uh, sorry, Damara Yudhisthi, along with his mother Kunti Devi, his wife Draupadi, as well as his four brothers, merely stood up. So much affection and respect, they ran to offer respects to Narada. And with great effort and respect, Yudhisthi and his brothers, wife, mother, everyone brought Narada to a big elevated seat of honor. <laughs> Then Yudhisthira began to do arti to Narada and worship him. And what Hanuman had described to Narada Muni, Narada Muni began singing those same glories of the Pandavas. Narada said, you are the topmost of all human beings. You are the sovereign lords of this earth planet. Bhagavan Krishna is your beloved, your worshipful deity, your guru, your maternal cousin. Krishna's mother, Devaki, and Kunti, the mother of the Pandavas, were cousins, were sisters. So the Pandavas and Krishna are maternal cousins. Therefore, Krishna is your maternal cousin, messenger, charity, charioteer, friend, and Krishna is also your soul. The darshan, the vision of Bhagavan is impossible even for demigods like Brahma and Shiva. But nonetheless, uh, and what to speak of Brahma and Shiva? The darshan of Sri Krishna is very difficult even for other incarnations of Krishna to see. All these other incarnations are simply portions of portions of a plenary portion of Krishna. But even for those other incarnations, very difficult for them to see Krishna. But you are so much fortunate that Krishna is always with you. <coughs> Krishna appeared on this earth planet to remove the burden of the demonic forces. But still even those demigods could not have darshan of Krishna. No? When all the demigods prayed to Lord Vishnu on the ocean of milk, the demigods, only Brahma could hear the voice. Brahma could not see anything. And Brahma spoke that vocal command to the other demigods. So other demigods not got darshan of Vishnu. And who is Vishnu? The the plenary expansion of an expansion of Krishna. So it means that even for the demigods, so difficult to get darshan of Krishna. So difficult, so rare. But you are so much fortunate that you const he is constantly with you. Okay, so we will hear more probably the day after tomorrow. Sorry, class a little late and some technical problems because using new, using the old computer. So again, day after tomorrow, we we'll continue the glories of the Pandavas. Go Premanandi. Hare.